all when the state of California is flat broke. How are you going to fund it? Uh, I, don't, I don't know if California is flat broke. I think so. Uh, we... It's quite very much flat broke, by the way. It's, so? a th it's the third worst state in the union. New York and New Jersey are, are ahead in their deficits. California is the third. Chicago's number four. I don't know who's number five, but we're in desperate shape right now financially. And I, that's what I read on the on cal.gov. Uh, anyway. uh, I don't know, maybe you're, maybe you're talking about pension debt and, and bond debt and that sort of thing. Poverty. Uh, I'm not sure that yeah, but there's 22% uh, percent of the poverty. population is living in uh, poverty. Below poverty. Well, and you're talking about spending more than... money. I'm just wondering, where are you going to get the money? It is, it is the, the fundamental question. I mean, how do you pay for, how do you pay for single payer? How, how would, right. how would and the state, uh, right? And no, and these are questions that we continue to discuss as a state, but there's various models that we've seen um, in terms of, think of the fact that for a business owner right now, the biggest three expenditures are payroll, rent, and workers' comp. And so how do you, how do you uh, address the issues of workers' comp? How do you address the issues of massive poverty and income inequality that exists in the state? You know, we are quickly to say we're the fifth largest economy in the world, but has that economy really trickled down to working men and women? And that is a frustration that we all share in, right? Uh, and so, but we know that the access to care, and when we talk about single payer and we talk about universal health care, you know, there are so many countries around the world that have a hybrid model, which is what we were trying to work on, and I think we're going to eventually land on, is how do we keep prescription drug prices low, and how do we guarantee a certain amount of services that, in my opinion, can help you prevent a lot of this, uh, prevent a lot of these uh, more sophisticated diseases because you haven't treated them, which end up costing us more money as well. So these are really, I mean, these are big questions that we have to tackle with as we move forward. Well, there, there has been the- He didn't answer the, the question. The argument that single payer cannot be done on a state-by-state -state basis, that it really has to, it has to be a national uh, a program. I don't know how that would work. Right. But do you think, do you think there is enough money in California to do a California-only single payer mm -mm. system? I think it's a worthwhile effort for us to try. In Canada, they began, I believe it was Saskatchewan County uh, or province who started it first and then it started evolving, so I think it was in the 50s. Guy, and so we're looking at Looking at the count, can we that to the camera? How do we can we say that to the camera? To they, have, they have all these pie in the sky uh, which is not dreams easy. and ideas, but they don't have the money to pay for it. Something that's overnight, but it's something that we should aspire towards and figure what that means. And you know, quite honestly, for me, in not giving you my entire strategy, I wanted to end. Uh, I wanted to be able to figure out how do we at least, at the very minimum, give everybody uh, primary care. Uh, we're seeing transnational gangs moving now into insurance fraud because the payout are higher and the sentences are much lower. Mm. Uh, and so again, how do we continue to allow, how do we continue to fight fraud? We have a very robust uh, fraud unit within the department, making sure that we continue to fund that uh, and that we continue to work with the Attorney General's office so that our businesses are not, um, you know, blackmailed, as I've heard in so many instances. And we've done, I've done work on this issue with constant uh, frivolous litigation uh, for a lot of our small business owners, which continues to be a, a big problem. Uh, and so those are the things that people care about. And once you engage the, the, the Californian, the average working folks, they understand that it's important. And even the conversation, I just, to, I know I have a limited time, the conversation with our own, um, my own family, as we were filling out the ballots yesterday, my mom said, you know, do you know that I have a life insurance out for all my kids? I'm like, what? And she says, yeah, I want to make sure we had that peace of mind. And that's what insurance does to so many. It gives you the peace of mind to make sure I went to USC to get a master's in leadership, paid a lot of money to essentially tell me, you always have to hire smarter. Uh, and that's what I've done. I've hired some of the most amazing 
smart individuals who uh, at the fundamentally at our core have the same core values and which allow us to be you know one of the most effective legislators in Sacramento. No brother. Other questions from the audience? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Both you uh Okay. Okay, yes, sir. Both you, both you and your opponent, Poisoner, vowed not to take insurance money, but you did and had to give back money you took from a political action committee of the nation's largest physicians and medical malpractice insurer. Would you go into detail about that, please? Yeah, we received that money and we returned it because I wasn't going to take insurance money. It's, it's been a tradition that insurance commissioner candidates don't take insurance money. Legislators do. Um, and, and so, so, an insurance committee. Members you took and gave it back. Yeah. You admit you're here. Yes. Well, you know, we're, we're about out of time, uh, Senator. So maybe you just want to wrap up. Why? Um, why do you want to do this? Again, <laughs> I still haven't convinced you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you. You know, there's no, doubt, answers, there, there's no doubt that, um, you know, insurance is something that uh, many people find difficult to talk about and discuss. But again, if you're not at the table, um, then you don't have a say in terms of uh, what the rate structures are. How is this really going to impact the quality of life for you, for your business, and for your family? Uh, and I'm proud of the record that I've had uh, of always, you know, keeping an eye for our working families and for our consumers, whether those are our small businesses who are the backbone of our economy or our hardworking Californians who are trying to make ends meet and be able to afford health care for themselves. Uh, this opportunity to run statewide, to serve as a California Insurance Commissioner, gives me a different opportunity to continue to advocate at the next level uh, as a constitutional officer, uh, keep California at the forefront of um, investing in technologies that are going to help not only uh, us to have better products as consumers, protect our consumers, but also allow us to innovate. And it is kind of a nuanced position, but people that know me know that I don't settle for uh, just what the job is. It's up for us to make the best of this job to be able to uh, tackle other issues that are important in California. We're multifaceted as individuals, we're multifaceted as Californians, and so I'm gonna take this opportunity to continue to serve the state that has given me and my family absolutely everything. Uh, and I am proud of the work that I've done as a public servant. Uh, I'm gonna to continue to do that as your next California Insurance Commissioner. Very good. You know, they, um,